Hello and welcome to the session of uh, mechanical vibration. In this session, I am going to introduce you what is a vibratory motion and then we will talk about some basic terminology of vibration. So if I will define the vibration, any motion that repeat itself after a fixed time interval can be defined can be considered as vibratory motion or oscillatory motion. So vibration or oscillation are interchangeable terms. In this top session, we are going to talk about what is a periodic motion, then we will also see what is a simple harmonic motion. Because I have observed that certain student has confusion, uh, students have confusion that what is the difference between a periodic motion and a simple harmonic motion and they also compare these two motion with the oscillatory motion. So let me tell you, oscillation is a generalized term, general term. Then periodic motion is a very general motion where whenever we are having repetition the motion is a periodic motion but simple harmonic motion is a very special kind of periodic motion where the amplitude about the mean posi position remains constant. Then we will talk about the frequency and time period of a motion and finally we will classify different types of vibration by taking a simple example. So. If I will start with what is a periodic motion or along with the harmonic motion, I can say that any motion which repeat itself is a periodic motion. But the simple harmonic motion is a special case of periodic motion. How we can understand this? So let's see that suppose that this is a ball which is going along this path. And this part is like that there are two circular uh, section connected to each other for one part the radius is r2 for another part the radius is r1 and this ball is moving along this path so if i will see the projection of this wall on this plane this is the projected plane suppose the ball is moving on this path and i am looking from this side so i will see the projection of this ball on the surface so when the ball is at this position i will see that ball will be here when the ball will move and ball will reach here i will see ball will be here then it will come down here so again the ball will go downward and then it will go in this way so ball will reach here so in that way there is a motion of ball on this plane which i can write which i can define with respect to time so here i am showing that the motion of the ball with respect to time so i will find that when ball will be here i can see that it will be here as it will move in this way my projection or the shadow of this ball on this wall will move in this direction this way so that if i will closely observe i can see here that this is one kind of periodic motion which repeat itself after this point or after this time so this length of the time will be one time period or i can say that from here to here there is one oscillation of this periodic motion so such kind of motion are considered as periodic motion now let's see another motion where i am having a circular path and the same ball is now revolving or rotating uh, revolving on uh, about this point on this circular path if i will again see the projection of this wall on this vertical wall i will observe that when i will start watching the ball the projection of the ball will be here as the ball will go along this path and suppose at time t ball is here so now if I will calculate whatever what is the angle traveled by the ball I can say that theta will be omega t where omega is the angular velocity of this ball which is constant here. Now if I will again make the diagram between the motion or the amplitude of the projection of the ball with respect to time I will observe that this time my motion will be a simple sinusoidal motion. So this kind of motion where I will be able to write my equation of motion using simple sine function, I will say that this is a simple harmonic motion. In terms of my physical observation, I can observe that if this is my mean position, the ball is going to this point, then it is coming back to this point, then it is going on the other side and again it is moving in this direction. And amplitude of the ball or the maximum deflection of the ball with respect to this mean position is constant on both the side and that will be equal to this value a which is the radius of this circular path. 
so such motion which can be represented by a simple sine function or a simple cos function are the uh, are, are this because cos or sine are the harmonic function which says that the motion is repeating itself uh, after f6 time period and these motions are basically known as the simple harmonic motion in case of simple harmonic motion if i want to define other terms this is the representation of a simple harmonic motion where a will show you the amplitude amplitude or the maximum value of the deflection then omega showing the angular frequency or angular velocity of the rotation and then t is the time so in this case if this is my motion this gap will tell me the time period which will be equal to the 2 pi by omega value where this is your time axis and this is your amplitude axis y is a function of time so that is the instantaneous displacement of your uh, oscillatory motion uh, oscillatory motion or the mass or i should say that whatever is the object which is having oscillatory motion will have a Defla this instantaneous displacement y that can be represented by this equation now before i give you the classification of vibration let me explain you that what is the degree of freedom as we know that the independent motion a body can exhibit are the degree of motion uh, in case suppose i am having a body in the space and suppose this is a two dimensional plane so what do you think how many degree of freedom this body will have i will say that there are three degree of freedom one is the one translation motion along x direction second one another translation motion along the y direction and third will be a rotation motion about the z axis so this body which is in the space will have three degree of freedom two translational one rotational degree of freedom if i will consider a body in the three dimensional space in this case the total degree of freedom will become 3 translation along x y and z and 3 rotation along x y and z so such body which is just suspended in the space without any constraint will show 6 degree of freedom so these are the independent motion which are not related to each other what do you mean by the independent motion independent motion means if the i am able to calculate the x value is it possible to find a relation between the motion along x and y direction for example if if the body is moving and this is having the final orientation in this way is it possible if i will calculate the motion of this point along the x direction suppose this is it possible to get the motion along the y direction no these are two independent motion so i am not able to get the uh, the one value with respect to the other value that means these are the independent motion at the same time i will not be able to cal calculate the angular angular rotation of the body that means these three are the independent motion which are not linked to each other and therefore we will say the body has three degree of freedom if you can further understand this suppose this is a body in the two dimensional space and i am putting a pin joint here if i am going to put a pin joint here now the body can only rotate about this point that means i have put constraint on my x and y now only the rotation about z is free so now my degree of freedom will become one this this example indicate that when i am going to put a pin joint it is going to restrict two degree of freedom and there will be only one degree of freedom remain that is the rotation about the z axis suppose i am going to add another body to this if i am going to add another body actually if i will just see that one body and the two body independently both will have three and three degree of freedom as i am going to put one pin joint i am going to restrict two degree of freedom so now it will remain four degree of freedom if i am going to put this body on this body that means now another pin joint that means again there will be a restriction of the two degree of freedom so remaining will be only two degree of freedom so in this case if there are two body connected with a pin joint will finally have 2 degree of freedom and which are the 2 degree of freedom 
rotation about this point of body 1 and rotation of body 2 about this point and why these two are independent because if I am giving a rotation of theta to this body is it possible to get that whether, whether this body will go in upward direction or the downward direction no I am not able to tell you that if the first body is having a counterclockwise rotation the second body will also have a counterclockwise rotation as well as if I will say that if I am giving a 30 degree rotation to my first body in counterclockwise direction is it possible to tell that the second body will also have a same rotation in the same direction no I cannot say that that means the motion of the first body or the rotation of the first body and the rotation of the second body are two independent motion that means the current system has two degree of freedom when we talk the degree of freedom particularly in case of vibratory motion we normally define a simple spring mass system if I will consider that this mass can only move in this channel that means now the system has only one degree of freedom this is the case I have already explained that if the body is in the space it will have six degree of freedom similarly if I will consider that this body along with the spring and I am assuming that this spring has only uh, translationary motion no rotational motion that means the body can go in this direction body can also go in this direction and body can also go in this direction but if I am considering that the spring is not allowing any rotation that means there will be only three degree of freedom now in particularly in case of vibratory motion suppose I am having a system where this mass can slide only in this channel that means this is a case where I am having one degree of freedom if I am going to add another mass to this body and I am putting a constraint that the both the mass can only slide in this channel what do you think how many degree of freedom in this case also the first mass has one degree of freedom at the same time the second mass has one degree of freedom so the total degree of freedom of this system will become two degree of freedom if you want to understand this physically again if I am giving a 1 cm displacement to mass m1 in the downward direction is it possible for you to tell the displacement and the direction of motion of the second mass no it is not possible because it depends on all, all that if you are giving the force suddenly or you are going a slow force based on that you may interpret or predict but in let me tell you that these motion of the first body and the motion of the second body are completely independent to each other because they are not connected with a rigid limb instead of that second spring if the two bodies are connected with a rigid limb that means if the first body is going with an amplitude x1 definitely the second body is also going with the same amplitude that means this system has only one degree of freedom because if I will calculate the motion of the first body I will be able to get the motion of the second body but in this case if I am getting the motion of the first body I will not be able to get the motion of the second body similarly if I am going to add multiple single degree of freedom system if I am having n masses all the masses are having individually one degree of freedom so the total degree of this degree of freedom of this system will become n now let's go back and see different examples or the classification of your different vibratory system so for example I am showing here one uh, picture and I am saying that this uh, this is a case of free vibration what is the case of free vibration suppose this is my system and if I am giving an initial deflection to my system of x0 and I will release my system if I will release my system what will happen the mass will vibrate about this mean position and this kind of motion where I am initially giving certain deflection to my body and then I will release my system that is called the free vibration motion of the system on the other end if I am having a spring mass system and I am applying a harmonic force to the body suppose I am applying a force F sin omega t that means the force will keep acting on the body and because of that the body will vibrate along this about this mean position and it is expected that the frequency of the motion of this mass will be equal to the frequency of the external excitation such motions are known as the force motion now what is the damped and undamped condition in your in nature all systems are damped system but for simplif simplification of your uh, 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 real life problem so sometime we consider that system has zero damping for example if 
I am saying that this is a mass mounted on a bar and I am giving a compression to this body initially and then I am removing my force. What will happen? This mass will oscillate about this mean position but I will observe that after certain period of time the, the mass will become stationary again. Why? Because there is a dissipation of energy because of the intramolecular friction of the material of this bar. So that means there is a damping or there is a dissipation mechanism available in my system which will finally dissipate all the vibratory energy and system will again become stationary. That means this is a system where we are having damping and if I am interested to make a mathematical diagram of damping I can simply explain that there will be a spring because of the compressive stiffness of this bar as well as because of the intramolecular friction there will be a mechanism which are which is going to damp the or the dissipate the energy so this is my damped system as I said that if I am having a single mass that is my single degree of freedom system if I, if I am having multiple mass that would become my multi degree of freedom system now there are three terms longitudinal vibration lateral vibration and torsional vibration so for to understand these three vibration let's consider a case where I am having a suspended root round bar and at the end of the round bar there is a disc attached if I will see this is the disc has moment of inertia I about this axis as well as it is having a mass M. Now if I will apply certain force in this direction and I will release my force the mass will oscillate in this direction. So this is your longitudinal vibration. So this is your longitudinal vibration. In the second case instead of applying force in this direction if I will apply a force in this direction what will happen the bar will oscillate in this way. So there will be a bending of this uh, round bar and this mass will oscillate in this direction that vibrations are known as the lateral vibration or your uh, transverse vibration. In third case if instead of giving force in horizontal direction or in the vertical direction if I will give a rotation to this disc. So there will be a torsional vibration of this system and in this case the torsional stiffness of this round bar will come into the picture. So now if I will categorize the three cases in my first case when I am applying force in this direction the compressive stiffness will come into the picture. When I am applying force in this direction there is a bending type of motion of this bar so bending stiffness will come into the picture but in the third case when I am giving a initial rotation or initial theta theta naught to the body and then I will release the system there is a free vibration but in this case my torsional stiffness will come into the picture. So I hope that now you are having basic understanding of few terms there are as I said that this is a simple harmonic motion and in case of a simple harmonic motion if I will be able to measure the time period of my motion I will be able to calculate the frequency the relation between the time period and the frequency is an inverse relation so T is equal to 1 by F or vice versa so now in my next lecture we are going to talk about free vibration of a single degree of freedom system thank you